Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and I'm so proud of you to making it to the second part of this video. And for those who haven't watched the first part of the video, which is pharmacodynamics, I highly recommend you go watch that first just so you get a better understanding of pharmacokinetics because they're both linked. Hey guys, do you ever wonder why some drugs are swallowed in a pill form while others are inhaled by pump or why some drugs are best taken directly into the bloodstream through IV route well the method by which a drug is administered into the bloodstream and along with some other factors determine the speed with which the medication is going to show its effect so in this video I'm gonna focus on pharmacokinetics which is the study on how the drug passes through the human body if you haven't already watched my first part of the video I recommend pause this video right now and go watch pharmacodynamics the first part of the video so you get a good understanding of pharmacokinetics so as a pharmacy technician why do we need to understand or why do we care how the medication passes through the body? See, in a pharmacy, you will be dispensing not only oral medications, but inhalants, aerosols, IV, and intramuscular medications. So it's important that you understand that the right medication is dispensed in the right dosage form, in the right amount, via right route of administration for the health and safety of the patient. And also you need to know how the body handles drugs, whether they are administered uh, orally by IV route. And in order to do so, you need to know how the body handles the drugs, whether they are administered orally or by IV route or any other route. Sometimes pharmacokinetics gets confused with pharmacodynamics and one quick trick to remember which is which is to keep in mind that pharmacokinetics is what the body does to the drug while pharmacodynamics is the study of what the drug does to the body. Okay, so now that you understand the definition of pharmacokinetics, let's dive a little further. When we swallow a pill, it goes through our gut and gets absorbed into the bloodstream where it's distributed into the cells and tissues, uh, metabolized and then eliminated from our body. These are the four key steps in pharmacokinetics and are referred to as ADME, A-D-M-E, absorption, distribution, metabolism and elimination. So the ADME process occurs simultaneously in the body, but I'm gonna discuss each of these steps separately so you get a better understanding. So let's first talk about absorption. Absorption basically refers to the movement of the drug from its site of administration to the bloodstream. And absorption largely depends on the type of the drug, how it is designed and the condition it's intended to treat. For example, if a pill is swallowed orally, most of the absorption of the medication will take place in the small intestine from where the drug will then move to the liver and then back into the bloodstream to be transported to its site of action. The liver and the intestinal walls metabolize many drugs which lessens the amount of the drug that gets to the bloodstream and this process is called the first pass effect or first pass metabolism. And now because the drugs delivered via other routes such as injection or subcutaneous or intramuscular route do not go through intestine, thus they do not go through the first pass metabolism, which means less drug is wasted and more drug gets into the bloodstream Therefore, we may need a lower dose of the IV uh, intramuscular or subcutaneous medication compared to the oral uh, dose or the oral medication to achieve the intended effect. And that's why you see a doctor prescribe a lower dosage of medication when given as an injection uh, and the higher dose of the same medication when given in a pill form. Similarly, liquid medications are more readily absorbed than tablets or capsules because there are smaller particles in liquid medications. These particles are already broken down, so it saves the time that the body requires to break the larger particles into uh, the smaller particles in case of tablets and capsules. Absorption of a drug does not always occur via stomach and bloodstream, um, as in the case of oral and injectable medications. We have inhaled medications as well. 
the inhaled medications for example enter through the mouth and go to the lungs where the mucous membrane of the alveoli of the lungs absorb the medication and send it into the bloodstream via capillary and then there are some topical medications that do not absorb in the bloodstream at all um, like for example uh, hydrocortisone cream when applied topically on the skin for rash will only display topical effect on the skin however when you apply a transdermal patch uh, for example a fentanyl patch or a lidocaine patch in those patches the medication is in smaller size because of which it's easy for the medication to penetrate from the patch into the skin and from skin into the bloodstream Great. once the drug is absorbed it's carried throughout the body it moves from bloodstream to the tissues and intracellular fluids and binds to the receptors and this process of distribution could be partially responsible for unintended uh, side effects of the drugs as the uh, drug is carried throughout the body it can also negatively impact an organ or organs that were not supposed to be targeted uh, by the drug now all the cells in the human body have a specialized transport mechanism because of which the medication is distributed throughout the body so it's important that for academic purpose you know how these mechanisms work and some important ones are uh, passive diffusion a facilitated diffusion and active transport so let me explain them one by one passive diffusion is a process by which molecules diffuse from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration and it is the most important mechanism for passage of drugs through the membranes then we have the facilitated diffusion uh, this diffusion is also a kind of passive movement uh, with the exception that the molecules basically uh, bind to a specific protein that aid in the movement of these molecules across the membrane the next method of transport is the active transport uh, this is the transport in which the movement of the molecules across the cell membrane require energy okay now that you know different mechanisms of transport i want you to understand that there are different factors that affect the transport and distribution of the medication like drugs will be rapidly distributed to the organs having high blood flow uh, like heart kidneys um, and liver while the distribution will be lower to the organs with lesser blood flow like your muscles uh, fat and skin the permeability of tissue membranes to drugs is also important uh, the small size drugs or uh, lipid soluble drugs will diffuse through the membrane easily compared to the uh, large size or hydrophilic drugs and this is because membranes are lipid in nature which favors the absorption of lipid soluble or hydrophobic drugs and lastly the protein binding nature of the medications is also uh, very important that affects the distribution of the medications if a medication binds with the plasma protein uh, then of course the size of the molecule will increase because of which it will have difficulty passing through the membrane like i said before the bigger size molecules or the bigger size drugs have less permeability through the membrane so in this case the medications which have more protein affinity are going to bind with the protein molecules and they get bigger in size and hence making it difficult for uh, the larger molecules to pass through the membrane also remember only the free floating or unbound drugs pass through the uh, tissue membranes and are absorbed so by this point the drug has been distributed the next phase is metabolism this is where the drug is broken down and this takes place mostly in the body's largest internal organ which is the liver just remember liver is the primary site for drug metabolism but there are other organs that perform metabolic functions as well like your kidneys uh, gi tract and lungs now during metabolism the enzymes found in the liver break down the drug molecules into metabolites and most metabolites are inactive or less active compared to the original drug and are excreted however the metabolites of some drugs are active and will produce effect in the body until they are uh, further metabolized and are non-functional and then they can be excreted the liver may secrete the drugs or their metabolites into the bile that is stored in the gallbladder 
uh, the gallbladder then empties the bile into the intestine from where any drugs or any active metabolites are reabsorbed or just simply eliminated within the feces. And that brings us to the last step of pharmacokinetics, which is excretion. The last phase of a drug within the body is excretion. Now, this is the process by which drugs and their metabolites exit the body, primarily uh, via urine or feces. Most drugs and their metabolites are excreted in the urine by the kidneys, and the kidneys simply filter the blood and remove the waste materials from it, and is actually faster than the fecal excretion. See, the drugs excreting through feces generally take a day or two, while the ones excreted through uh, urine are actually eliminated within a few hours of administration. Now, mind you, urine and feces are not the only uh, route of elimination of medications. Uh, some of the medications may be excreted in uh, sweat, uh, saliva, or breast milk, or just are exhaled in air. This last step of pharmacokinetics, which is elimination, is super important because it helps maintain the steady levels of the medication in the body. You know, ideally, a drug would be eliminated um, at the same rate at which it is absorbed. See, the rates of uh, absorption, distribution, and elimination must be all balanced to ensure that the body has enough or the right amount of drug um, at all times. We don't want too much drug eliminated from our body because then we won't have enough concentration of the medication in the body uh, to show its effect. And also, we don't want too much drug in our body at any time because of the risk of toxicity, which could be actually deadly. All right, so that concludes the journey of medication into the body, around the body, and out of the body. And I hope you got the basic understanding of pharmacokinetics. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments or email. And don't forget to subscribe for more lessons on Pharmacy Technician Study Guide.